Hello and welcome back to the Wedding Capture Co podcast, a podcast for photographers and videographers with your host me, Chris, and Tom, who's sat opposite me now. Um, in this episode, we're going to talk about winter weddings. So obviously, we're getting into the winter wedding season. Um, there's less time in terms of light. So we're talking about the cold. We're talking about light. We're talking about sunset um, and how you can really prepare yourself and your couples for the um, for their winter weddings. And at the end, we also talk about um, the contract, which I'm now selling for wedding videos videographers this is my contract which i actually use for my business that was written by a proper solicitor um, specifically for videographers it covers a lot of pain points um, through experience that i've had being a videographer um, and it also comes with a guide to explain each point so i'll leave a link to that in the description so you can go and take a look yeah, so welcome back. Here we are, episode 15. Is it 15 already? 15, it's bad, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I feel, like I, I feel like we start most of the episodes like this, <laughs> but it's still blowing my mind of like, what a year this has been that we started this within this year, and here we are, like, 15. Yeah. I feel that's like, that is sort of I was milestone. speaking to somebody over there, like, how many episodes you've done? I was like, I think it's been around 10. And she opened the thing and was like, it's been 14. I was like, <laughs> oh, right, okay. <laughs> I was like, it's like 13 plus an intro or something, but I was like, I honestly didn't realise it. But we, so we, what I'm saying is 15. Pursued, it could even be 16. It could be, yeah. Could include 14... the intro as well. Yeah, include the yeah. So we could even be there. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, I, we're well into that's... double figures anyway, yeah. and that's, that still <laughs> yeah. blows my mind that that, yeah. that we're that we're still here holding our own with it. And... and as we saw in the last episode, we've been like going circling back to some of the things that we've like mentioned in the the first episode, which is about like preparing for the wedding season yeah now we're coming to the end of the wedding season and we're talking about other things that that relate back and to i that. feel like i've learned some stuff even just by having these conf- like but able to sit here and kind of i do a lot of things without thinking about it or just doing it because that's the way that i know how yeah and when you actually kind of rationalize what you do to explain it to other people i feel that i've probably learned some stuff from myself as well as obviously picking up some stuff from you along the way yeah, definitely. over the course yeah. of the year so I think there's probably episodes that we've visited this year that we could probably almost even circle back round to in future episodes in, in oh, yeah, other years yeah. Yeah. where we could kind of almost yeah revise what we've said as we've kind of learnt more or as our opinions have changed and it's interesting to talk things over with somebody as well especially as you're going through the season and like we've some, we've done some of these yeah. recording sessions where we've both turned up and gone oh <laughs> yeah. so busy or and sometimes then, as well we've even had we've had very much the same view or we thought we had one view and by the time we've talked about it we've actually kind of contradicted our own opinions which is is kind of weird as well yeah no that's a very good point and for those that don't know we so we record two of these um every time we meet up so the last one was a very much a catch-up episode like we we went for a lot of like what we've been up to in the last six weeks and a lot of things have been going through our mind from weddings so this one this episode is going to be more focused on one specific thing and that is winter weddings we've got winter coming up it is as we're recording this in october but i believe this will probably go out in november yeah by the time we get to this one it'll probably definitely be around the halloween mark and so yeah. we'll be i'm definitely on the eve of although it's very sunny outside and bright today it's still cold. i can almost guarantee that it's going to be a very different story by the time that this actually as i parked up outside your house i heard i heard the oh it's getting very chilly outside isn't it so the, you know, yeah. the usual conversation yeah. between british people as the season turns but i feel like i said this at the start of this week like i i, I drive my wife to work um every morning because i'm a nice husband <laughs> and on the first day i did it it was like 16 degrees on the monday yeah by the time i went out there on the next day it was like seven degrees oh, no. and it was literally like somebody had just flicked the switch and was like that's it like the winter button time been pressed yeah, now. yeah that's it like and the fake snow starts raining down and, <laughs> you know like i'm daring myself every day as to do i put the heating on yet and oh yeah i put the heating on this week for sure yeah and then you hear everyone go so we, can we talk about christmas yet or <laughs> we need to do a christmas episode at some point we, that, that, that definitely is going to happen i think like, yeah. we need to happen once the christmas tree's up in here we can wear our festive jumpers and, and have a christmas bring episode. the microphones to the uh, co-active party and oh could you imagine <laughs> i'm not sure that I, I should be trusted with a microphone no. at the co-active christmas party i don't think so oh that'd be funny but yeah so winter's coming up and we always, we just wanted to do an episode about uh, about winter weddings and about like how to prepare for them like how they're different um things that we've learned over the years doing winter weddings i mean personally i don't know about you but personally i've started doing less of them there was a point where i would see my weddings are more spread out from literally january till december yep. but now i feel like i try and take more in the summer because i find the summer ones even though on the day they're more i guess 
because it's longer out you sort of, you sort of yeah. spe- expected to do more after the dinner like in terms of like oh i'm gonna take the bridal party out now and stuff like that i feel like it's less challenging because you have so many options but i think that's the main thing is a summer wedding even though we're off the back of a year where it has been pretty wet so yeah. you could say that that's hampered you you still have options i know that i've had points where it's been so warm this year where it's just been too bright to do say group photos before the dinner yeah so i've gone oh, do you know what if we really have to when you're all kind of feeling a little bit more lethargic and it's a bit cooler the other side of dinner we can go and smash out those six or seven group shots yeah after food you where options. when you're into a winter wedding you know that you're doing not only your first couple shoot of the day but probably your couple shoot sunset shoot and group show all wrapped into one thing yeah, yeah. 20 minutes before you sit down to dinner and then you want your guests to have to, your bride yeah. and groom to have time with their guests as well and you've got but you know you're away you've got all this stuff to yeah, do yes so you're having to condense things into a lot, you know, there's, there's, there's marginally. And sometimes if you're, you know, right up in those, in some of those, you know, towards the shortest day of the year, it's getting dark before four o'clock. Yeah. Where if you're in a summer wedding, it's like getting up to half nine. Yeah. That is five hours of daylight, which you could be shooting in or have the option to shoot in that you are not, are not having. Yeah. So it's it does almost make like it. a different job. You've got, you've literally got to focus on completely different things. You've got to figure out what you can do, what you can't do. And, what your limitations are in the winter and don't get me wrong like i'm sure there'll be people out there look at like listening to this like but i like winter and it's nice and cozy and everything like that and i'm just i'm just not into it just like i'd, I'd, I'd trade the coziness for longer days and more light and i think that probably the, the, the yeah the problem comes is that when you when someone broaches the subject of a winter wedding to you yeah. it's like that instagram reality thing yeah like they yeah. see like log fires log and fires, warm candles christmas and trees and, really kind of yeah. sweet and quaint and cozy yeah Trying to photograph that yeah. really is really hard Wait, to, like- to translate it across because candles don't actually kick out that much light and that cozy when you're at 5 p.m. on a freezing cold <laughs> wet you know in, in a venue which maybe doesn't lend itself to yeah, it yeah the, 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 you've got 2 p.m ceremony and they've got 20 group shots exactly and you're like, that. It, doesn't, it doesn't yeah. always transfer across and what what can set out and you know kind of be sold to you as a real kind of postcard kind of yes yeah, snowy <laughs> winter wedding can rapidly become something which is really really challenging yeah if you're if you're not mentally prepared for it and also physically prepared to have the know-how to how to deal with stuff in in those low levels of light yeah and i think that's that relates to a good point that you you said which was um be careful how much you're charging for winter weddings because often there's the whole you know people will be like oh it's a winter wedding like maybe yeah. you should do winter discounts or oh it's a wednesday in in january maybe it should yeah maybe you should do it a little bit cheaper but i don't subscribe to this at all because one they're not they're, they're even sometimes more challenging yeah to film than or photograph than a summer wedding so you're doing a discount but doing the same amount of work and perhaps having to stress out a little bit more at certain points as yeah, well sure but also if someone who who worked say a teacher got asked to work during the school holidays says, oh it's a wednesday in the school holidays you should be doing it cheaper yeah that, how does that i think what up? makes it really easy or, or the reason that that couples suspect this is because obviously a lot of venues do offer do, yeah, out of, of course, season discounts because yeah, yeah. their their venues are going to be sat empty or they're less susceptible to getting bookings at those time of year yeah. that they do offer kind of an out of season discount yeah. but just because they're offering that that's their business and they have their reasons for doing so because their venue is going to be sat empty they'd rather take a slightly less money and you, obviously if you're a venue that relies on maybe the outdoor aesthetic you are getting a slightly compromised version of that venue yeah. hence the cheaper price. A venue is different. They've got wages but to pay and things like that. Exactly as well. that. So, yeah, they, yeah. They, they need to make sure that they can still, they're still in business or have got enough money to keep the power and the heating on, yeah. ready to open up again the, the next summer. Where yeah. you as a creative, or particularly in the photo and video industry, I think it's a lot easier to kind of batten down the hatches and win to yourself over those months if you don't have to be shooting. Yeah. But also, there's no shortage of tasks that like we were always saying in the last episode that, you know, I've got all new marketing material that I haven't pushed out and I'm still booking weddings for next year based on the stuff that I updated my website with last Christmas. And, yeah. you know, you've got that lovely tax return to do, which is due in <laughs> January. So there's there's stuff to be done over the winter or even just have a damn rest from the summer. Like there's lots of things that you can just do yeah. in that time that, that that don't mean you need, you need to be shooting still a volume of weddings. You almost sacrifice your summer. So you make the yeah. most of having that time, like, you know, spend a bit more time in Christmas shopping and getting in, in that sort of yeah. mode. And that, that, that's kind of what I like actually about coming from retail to being a wedding videographer is like now I can sort of spend more time getting excited for the Christmas and like the winter season, but yeah. you know, spend a day putting the tree up because I've got no wedding time, that weekend. Yeah. And yeah, just, 
those uh, little things uh, and I, th- I feel like if you start spreading it and obviously there's people that have their reason for they want to do winter weddings or they take them yeah. across the year because sometimes obviously financially with the way a lot of people do their payment plans they need to be earning in the winter still yeah. right but with us and for those people thinking oh i need to be earning in the winter i fully recommend doing half payment six months before and half payment yeah. a month before that way our payments where well, we've got them divided out into months on a spreadsheet so we can see how much we're getting throughout the year and our payments are equ- pretty much equally divided there's like a quiet month in like maybe could be october where we've got no like no weddings in november and none in like yeah. you know march next year or whenever the whenever it is six months ahead that can be a little bit quiet, but you don't have that whole you're rich in summer and you're poor in winter thing. Yeah, yeah. Spreading the payments out from your clients. I mean, so your couples pay you half the balance, six, say, months, six months, before months before their wedding, and, and then half. the final balance a month before. Yeah. And we've done that since 2020, and it's been a game changer for us because I can't save money. So I, I, yeah. I basically live. Yes, yeah, so you're naturally you're you're kind of easing that curve, aren't mm. you? Of a kind of yeah, like say being. Yeah. I'm sure it comes back to be that finance episode where yeah, you spoke about yeah, kind of being a millionaire in the in the summer and then yeah. and then kind of you know yeah. like scrape into the backs of your cupboards. Come the, you know. But the amount of people that hibernate during during the winter. Oh, sorry, the amount of p- people that say to me during oh, it's the winter now. I've got to like try and find some corporate work or something. Mm. If you did payments like that and managed how many weddings yeah. you got, you wouldn't need to be like I need to find corporate work or something to do. So I feel like that makes a huge difference to your mental health and like how how you think about where you take weddings throughout the year. Yeah, I think I, I obviously work slightly differently to that, but I've, yeah, I've, I think I'm always much more of a natural saver anyway. And I always kind of find that I pay myself a set wage throughout the summer. So the money does tend to pull up a little bit yeah. in my business account. But then I know that kind of I have it and I also save for tax. So that once I pay that tax bill in January, there's normally always something left in there that I can almost receive myself a nice little bonus then yeah. with the money that's left in the account. So I've got something then to either do, you know, buy something nice within that time or maybe go on a little break or uh, ever set me something I need. <laughs> yeah, going yeah. forward, I've got that ready at the start of the season. Yeah. Um, but I think having ways that you don't have to rely on winter weddings. Yeah, we're not we're not sitting saying don't do them. If you have a, a particular fondness for winter weddings, then that's fine. But don't don't force yourself to take those more difficult jobs yeah. out of necessity or out of desperation because you've you know not financially planned then you know the tax man wants a chunk of you come january so you're forced to take on a bunch of christmas weddings yeah in order just to kind of make ends meet again until you start again in in march or april yeah and often like you say like the instagram versus reality thing is i mean it's only a couple of days ago i saw this winter wedding video there was snow and like the the snow was lit up by a lovely light and stuff and it was a really it was a sort of properly what you'd imagine a picturesque winter wedding video yeah. to be like. And all I could think of was like, my winter vid- win- wedding videos are literally like people crammed into a dark room, yeah. candids, and you're trying to like shooting at ISO 12,000, trying to get something in this tiny little room with a 50 mil. Uh, and it just, it doesn't seem, uh, it's not as glamorous as that. And often it doesn't end up on the portfolio because yeah. I'm showing on the portfolio, I'm trying to show what I can do what the best work i can do if i'm limited to a tiny room and it's dark it's not the best work i can do i'm just limited to that and it's also really hard as well like i come to realize to show the difference between a summer wedding and a winter wedding like during 20 i think it was 2021 i shot a wedding the week before christmas so the eight, I think like the 18th of december yeah um i'd been in I'd, I'd had to miss a wedding the week before it's the only wedding i've ever had to miss due to being ill because i had covid so i went and shot a wedding in south at the square tower yeah two days after coming out of covid isolation and the yeah. week before christmas yeah and it was a really bright sunny day and i took probably one of my favorite sunset photos i've ever taken yeah of the couple walking on the little pier out by the water um yeah. there yeah. so they're walking yeah. along that i'm at the top and they literally have an orange sky this and it's so hazy you can just see the white circle of the oh, sun that's cool, yeah. coming down yeah I have to tell people though that's the week before Christmas. Yeah. To appreciate that, that, that I took that sunset photo literally about twenty minutes after the ceremony ended. It's quite rare in the like summer. We came get... out of the wedding, did the confetti, and I was like, "That sun looks amazing. Okay. We need to yeah. go." Yeah. But if you look at the photo, people just go, "Oh, that's an epic sunset." Yeah. You, you can't tell by looking at it that that was shot at like twenty past three in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's it's not almost as if kind of that's the reality of a winter wedding. So in terms of marketing for a winter wedding, it looks like a summer wedding photo. Yeah. So it's not as if I was kind of harboring loads of really good winter content from doing that. But like I say, the reality of a lot of it is that you are kind of yeah shoved into a room freezing cold. All the guests are in coats and scarves yeah. from coming outside, or have got blue noses from being <laughs> so cold, or or, and also, I think 
as well just energy levels like you know we yeah. kind of, I know that I sometimes have less enthusiasm for like I didn't realise how much of kind of a sun worshipper and I needed the sun yeah. to kind of reflect my mood until I started doing this it's where, not just that it's when you're warm and cosy that kind of makes you like quite tired and like yeah. lethargic is the word I think so. and I think if you look through like your work and I, yeah. I could probably speak for yours as well where a lot of the kind of the biggest energy in your work comes from like those lawn games or bouncy castles or like yeah. confettis and stuff and when you've had to make QP people stand and queue in the cold and they say they've all got their coats on and stuff to do a confetti moment, the energy is just not in that the same as it is in a summer wedding. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, are you going to use that or it doesn't, it, you know, so. The vibe is definitely different. I find it? that probably yeah. my scrutiny levels for kind of taking on a winter wedding are a lot higher than they are for a summer wedding. Yeah. Because you're, and also kind of, you know, turning it around to that couple straight away that if someone came to me for, a wedding inquiry and said, oh, we're getting married at this venue in the end of November. In the summer, my last question would probably be, so what time's your ceremony? Yeah. Where in the winter, it would be one of my first. True, yeah. Because if your yeah. ceremony is past the clock's going back and it's after 2 p.m., then you know you're on for a, a real, real tight run. Yeah, I, I completely agree with this. And I've got a wedding mid-November, six-course dinner, and like, I don't know how I'm going to get time to film anything else other than what they're eating for dinner because yeah. it's a three and a half hour dinner, I think. And obviously, like, the ceremony is not particularly early. I'm sure it'll be absolutely fine. Like, we took them because they're a bloody lovely couple and their yeah. wedding's going to be cool. But we're limited to time as it is, and now we're, like, really limited. In yeah, I think of- it's, well, it's probably worth saying at this point. I had my last wedding of this year is the 21st of December. Um, I took their wedding again. They, um, the, the, if it's for two brides, one of which was a maid of honour at a wedding that I shot last year. I know they're a lovely couple. Um, they're very adamant that they want marginally more candids than kind of post stuff. So it doesn't rely on being outside. Yeah. And I've already taken a wedding for the day before Christmas Eve next year. And yeah. that is actually for a later ceremony as well. Yeah. But those guys have purposely pitched for a later ceremony so that their evening stacks up differently. But then we already had that conversation and they're very, very willing and want a first look. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I think that was the conversation. Something else I think, which is I also, you need to kind of look at is managing expectations of what is possible to achieve in the hours they like you have yeah. and then being flexible to work their schedule so they can still get those moments that you want while still having their way. So for this example, I believe this couple are going to get married somewhere around half past two. So I know that when we come out of the ceremony, we're looking at probably the last hour of daylight. So yeah. there's no way that I can get couple stuff, group stuff, all that stuff in an, in, in that hour. Yeah. So they don't know. We're quite happy. We're going to do a first look at say an hour and a half before ceremony with us and our bridal parties so they're going to kind of lead us out. We'll have a first look. We'll do our bridal party portraits then. We'll have a little kind of couple shoot in the grounds yeah. and then walk into our ceremony together. Yeah, so because they Because they've built yeah. their day around that, in yeah. the summer, that would seem marginally more, more odd or work less well. Yeah. So it almost yeah. lends itself to that so winter the, setting yeah. that they've kind of flipped it on its head and used the shorter schedule to embrace having their wedding the way that it is. That's a really good shout. Well, I'm, we used to... Like back in the day, we used to try and encourage people to do first looks when people were like, oh, you know, um, we've got, got quite a short reception drinks or whatever. And we're like, oh, well, have you thought about doing a first look? Because it might be a good opportunity yeah. to see each other beforehand. And then you can also have some couples before you go into the ceremony. Yeah. So then you don't have to spend your reception drinks doing any of that stuff. People would really not get they really the British against it, aren't really they? Don't yeah. like the first look they're against idea. it anyway. But I think to, then to go, well, why do we need to? Because it's going to be dark light to eight o'clock in the summer. Yeah. There's no argument for that yeah, where if yeah. you're saying well i need to be honest about this is i know in your head you've got dreams of you know kind of walking down, down the grounds the of a yeah. of, of a hotel in a first stall with like the christmas tree <laughs> in the background but the reality yeah. is it could be chucking it down in rain and pitch black yeah is that if you want that kind of wintry thing the sun's naturally lower in the sky if we can do that before your ceremony it will calm your nerves yeah. going in because you've seen each other you'll get those wintry <coughs> moments and it means then that coming out the other end of the ceremony you know that you've not got to go back out in that cold at all you can spend all that time inside with your guests yeah, and exactly, doing that yeah, stuff. And, yeah. and for you, I think, as a, as a photographer or videographer, knowing then that once you film the ceremony, you've not got then got to try and go and make something of that. Yeah. That's a lot better. 100%. I feel like that's, that's a, it can be a much more natural moment because a couple will be relaxed as well. I feel like a jet engine that's just yeah, taken off in my garden. Yeah, your garden. <laughs> as I'm going to open the door in the last episode, I'm going to close it in this one now just so that you can actually hear us. Well, the sun has gone in now, so... I swear they just hear us and they're like, yep, now's the time to do this. <laughs> it's like the quickest podcast day. I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll fire up my... Last time it was like some sort of saw or something. Like it going was, up. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
Um, but yeah, like takeaway is set expectation with the couples. I think that's that's how you can be the most prepared for a day like this yeah. is. And I think that's what separates experience from someone who's maybe good at photography but hasn't got the experience in the day is yeah. that they'll set the expectation with the couple and be like, you really pay attention to how much light you've got, mm. what sort of um, areas you've got around the venue. Because again, light also depends on if there's hills around the venue and stuff, you're going to lose yeah. it a lot earlier and things like that. And setting that expectation and being like, okay, what time is your ceremony? It's the first thing you need to find yeah. out. Do you want to do this beforehand? Can we squeeze in this afterwards? If it's raining, where can I do groups? Like those sort of things, right? Yeah, and it sounds like a really daunting prospect when you're kind of, you know, hopefully you should want to book everybody that, that comes to you. And it almost sounds like you're trying to avoid or try to turn work away by going, well, if you don't do these things, it's really difficult for me to photograph your wedding. But I can almost certainly say 90% of couples would have not thought about that. No. All they can see is, oh, this lines up really well. Or the venue have even gone, oh, yeah, get married at this time because everyone yeah. gets married. It works really well time-wise. Like I was at a wedding showcase on the weekend and a couple came and spoke to me then and they're like, oh, we're getting married December 2nd or something like that it was. And so I said to them, then, oh, the only thing that I would, the only concern that I would have is just watch what time you book your ceremony for. Yeah. Because it's going to get dark at four o'clock. Yeah. If you went then she was like, I've not even thought about that. I feel like venues tend to be like, oh, book it at 2 p.m. or something. Yeah, because they like, still they? want that time to get ready in the morning and it suits them. Yeah. And it, and it not even entered their head that, oh, crap, it's going to get dark then. Yeah. And you need, you know, us as as filmmakers and as photographers need light to work. You know, that's kind of the crux, yeah. the core of what we do. Yeah. And I'm not saying that that should be the first thing that comes into a couple's head when they book their wedding. But I, I, on the flip side of that, I do believe that it's our responsibility to educate them yeah. rather than turn yeah. around and go and offer it as an excuse at the other end when you give them a dingy lit that's the thing. Gallery Setting back. expectations is much better than excuse. So you say to them yeah. that if you've got an hour of reception drinks and you don't want to do a first look, then be prepared that your groups might be in the dark or your couples yeah. might be in the dark. And then if it comes to the day and they're like, well, actually, can we delay groups for a little bit? Yeah, then you've no. already done that in yeah. the call, said, told them, by yeah. the way, if you don't do this, this is going to happen. Same with anything for, certainly for video with things like the speeches. Like if you don't let us mark you up and like get prepared and stuff before you yeah. guys stand up and start doing it without us, you're going to miss. We set that expectation so that on the day, and we'll say to it again on the day, like, you know, we need five minutes, give us five minutes. If they don't, we've said in a pre yeah, wedding call, we've said it on the day. Yeah. If you start with us, this is what happens. And like, that's just, I think the whole thing of um, having those pre wedding calls and just like setting, like having the experience that we've yeah. got is setting expectation for couples. If this happens, then we need to do this. If not, that's fine. It's your wedding day. You can do what you want. But I'm yeah. just warning you that that, that yeah, will Yeah, the happen. same way that you're, you're if, you know, that you'd like to think that, that the person that makes their dinner would go, yes, oh, you can have this combination of whatever, but yeah. I don't think that goes. They should look to you as a voice of experience in your field of it and saying that I do need a roughly this amount of time in the daylight yeah. to achieve this. Or like I say, if you cut it tight enough and even go for, say, a 2 p.m. ceremony, that when you come out of the ceremony normally in a summer wedding i would give you half an hour to mingle with your guests and grab a drink where we you're going to be down the aisle and straight into group photos because we yeah. have to get this done yeah. there's going to you know if you if you're looking for a more chilled day to spend lots of time kind of hanging about it is going to have to be pretty whistle stop through most of that drinks hour yeah. just to get what we need and then you're going to have Relax to have your chill time evening. the yeah. other end yeah. and it's almost managing that schedule from really because they're the very kind of beginnings of the conversation yeah just just to know what what's possible i feel like to steal something from i think it was a creative com commune when was it liam had some group shots that he recommended were in yeah. one place yes and they were like no we need them here and then they just turned out not and, as yeah good. and they complained and said oh we don't like the lighting on those and yeah. it's like, well, all you can do is advise and yeah. afterwards it is up to them what they do i say but yeah i think as long as you've kind of stood your kind of ground and have that kind of bit of verbal with them to say yeah. in my professional experienced opinion yeah this is what we should do yeah and if they choose not to listen to you and think they know best then they, I, I believe it does give them very little room to complain yeah, yeah. if you have offered you know you've you've offered the benefit of your opinion and they've chosen not to go with it yeah and that's where experience comes from is that you offer experience and, yeah. and that's it but there are other ways that you can be prepared as well for obviously the worst <clears throat> um i've put an umbrella like we last last winter we got so tired of like all of the rainy stuff that we bought um a big white umbrella and then we said to couples like if it's raining do you want to go out with this umbrella we've got a light we've got an umbrella do you want to go out and do that and that became really handy because 
one, not all couples, even if they're doing a winter wedding, will buy yeah. umbrellas uh, and venues might not supply or it's got a big old logo on the top of it or something. So we've come prepared with something which in the worst case scenario we can use. And it looks really good as well. It was a huge white umbrella, like I think it's a like golf umbrella or something. And we lit it up with the lion. He obviously has that. And some people really like it. Don't they? Like, yeah. I've taken shots of umbrellas on wet weddings in summer before or I did yeah. a wedding a few months ago where they brought umbrellas in in the eventuality of rain and it didn't yeah. rain and when we went out for the sunset in the evening they were like i know it's really silly but can we just take a picture with our brollies because yeah they kind of wanted that fun moment with the umbrellas so yeah. there's things like that that you can do with You're kind of wet or it. winter weddings and, yeah. and you know I, I fully appreciate that not every couple are going to be are going to be some summer summer and sunny people and they might want to embrace that weather um but it's say it's having the means and even like I've got some of the points that I've got on here as well for just like you said being prepared yeah. for not only for the timeline but just physically prepared yeah. for winter weddings. Like I, I remember doing a couple of seasons and having to wear because it was cold. End up I put my jacket on to go outside to go and shoot groups, yeah. and then my cameras on must make my hold faster underneath my jacket, and they get knotted up and stuff like this. Or I got fed up of having to leave my jacket places and yeah. this and that. So I rapidly learned in the end that I went and bought myself like a thermal like t-shirt yeah. and like leggings, and then I just put those on, and then just put my like my wedding shirt and trousers over the top. So it allowed me to effectively still be like summer wedding Tom, but I could go outside and shoot group photos or take the couple out yeah. without a jacket on. Yeah. So I still looked smart and like I was at a wedding in the summer, yeah. but I didn't freeze my ass off because I wasn't out there in literally a short sleeve shirt. When you put um, when you put in the notes saying about the thermals, all I could think of was, for me, winter weddings end up being hotter because the venues always turn the heating right up. So you're out in the freezing cold doing like some sort of like group shot or couple shot or something. And you come in and it's like, oh my God, it's so hot in here. And I'm sweating one out in my yeah, jacket. So, you know, I always find that I regulate pretty well. Like, I was kind of wear, yeah, like it was kind of wicked enough that I didn't feel yeah, maybe too, the hot, is the way forward too hot inside. I just, it, for me, it was just much, it was much easier to do it that way than it was to kind of keep worrying about where my jacket, jacket was or on, having yeah. to wear a coat. And then if they're walking towards you, time I've untangled my my jacket from around my whole yeah. class my 85 they stood in front of me yeah that stuff like that was um a we lot have quite a, nice a lot easier up jacket which is our like branded one sort of thing and this that's that's decent i i don't think that's as smart as i would like it to be so maybe an underlayer rather than an overlayer yeah. is i just found yeah for me or particularly if you if you were for example like i think the, the wedding that i learned the hardest lesson on was i was shooting a wedding a city wedding in london yeah so i wanted to keep my kit obviously an absolute minimum it wasn't like i just pop back to my car and yeah, carry yeah. this or a brolly i had like a bag with me and if i was going to be trying shooting shooting a job on the streets that was much more difficult to do trying to carry a coat as well it was something else to carry oh it's the door it's the door we've got a present <laughs> I feel like everything's happened today. We had jet engines, we had Amazon men. All I need now is the window cleaners, the car, kind working. of like tapping at the glass behind the camera, yeah. and, we'll be, and we'll be well away. Um, so yeah, the, the wedding that I did, um, it was say it was a city wedding, and so it was much it was much easier to kind of to just say to wear my kind of my warm stuff underneath rather yeah. than be bulked out um, over, over the top. And the other thing you said is batteries as well. Now I, I can't. I'm not sure how much I can relate to this because I personally think that I don't know how batteries work, but I, for me. I think batteries wear down more in the heat than the cold. And for me, they wear down in the summer more. I go through more batteries. I also have extremes of temperatures they've done, but it I, probably I've, is, yeah. maybe I, I know in summer weddings, I can still get through maybe one battery a day if I'm lucky. But I remember being shooting in really cold weather and being panicked and having a wedding where I maybe <laughs> yeah. didn't have the spare batteries that I thought I did yeah. and have gone out on a couple shoot and lost nearly half a battery on a 15 minute couple shoot <laughs> just because of how damn cold it was. Yeah. And then being panicked of like, well, I need to charge them during dinner. And we go or through to, yeah, so I've got yeah. four. So <laughs> I never normally get through them. No. So that's something else again. And not always, not always so much camera batteries, but if you're powering like video lights, double A's and stuff like that, are particularly sensitive temperature. Yeah. If you're using batteries in flashes or needing say like little video panels and stuff that use rechargeable batteries, do be prepared that they won't hold hold their charge as much in the cold. Yeah, and that's a good point around video lights as well. Like if you're a videographer. Um, bring in your video lights is a is a big deal for for winter yeah. weddings more so than summer weddings. Some, I mean, 
I use video lights for dance floors at summer weddings and some people would look at me and be like, why do you need that? And I'm like, I'm not trying to light the dance floor. I'm trying to get some good hair light and things like yeah. that during the summer. But sometimes in the winter, you're you're actually just trying to fill the space with some light. There's There's been times where I've walked into a prep room in, in the winter and it's been terrible. And no matter how close you're putting someone to the window, you just... You're yeah. not getting anything. <laughs> you're riding her nose to the yeah. glass and you're still struggling <laughs> yeah. to get an, But no, because get you, don't want, you don't just want to get the bride getting her makeup done. You want to get all the bridesmaids in the sofa yeah. in the corner having a chat. And if that's in pitch black, it's just looking flat and boring. Yeah. So there's been times where we've taken our light into the prep room and just smashed it up at the ceiling and then just like... That's it. it. And it's daylight balance. You're offering yeah. something very similar that you would be getting on just ambient light coming through the windows yeah. during the the hot yeah, the, the, the warmer or brighter months of the and year. And the couple of photographers have been so grateful for it. And so just bringing a video light or two, so we have two that we bring to every wedding, when we remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, and usually that's used for cross-light on the dance floor, but during the speeches, uh, sorry, during the winter, it can be used for anything from speeches in a really dark venue. Yeah. We try not to, but if it's particularly bad, we'll do it prep if the prep like location is not so good and then the rain shots as well or like out outdoor oh, like, couple yeah, like stuff. backlit stuff yeah, yeah backlit but stuff. even again if you get like couples that you can see your breath cold that yeah, kind that of stuff atmosphere is, yeah. of that needs requires a backlight doesn't yeah. it and even just while you're talking about those panels reminded me i shot a wedding in december a couple of years ago um up at a barn and it again being a stone barn with very small windows quite high up that yeah. normally a 1 p.m ceremony in the summer enough ambient comes through those that give you kind of a base of light in the room yeah. and this one being say a midday ceremony but in december and it just wasn't it just wasn't bright outside because no. of the time of year it was and a videographer then having those big led panels and literally just having one in each corner of the room just faced towards where the couple were yeah. that it made me it gave me a little bit of white balance issues but it it kept my iso from being dangerously high in the middle yeah. of the day to almost sensible and it offers a bit of a pop as well, as a bit more contrast. Yeah, to it so as that well. little bit of separation enough so, yeah. that kind of they didn't just look like they were kind of just really muddy blending or kind into, of blending yeah. into a space. And yeah. I think remember being when when him setting them up, looking at these big kind of like panels that he was kind of putting in the room and thinking kind of that they look quite distracting, but then being quite grateful for them. The other yeah. end that yeah. he'd had the foresight to bring something like that. That's the thing. So, I, I feel like with video lights, they they are quite distracting. Like I've used them for speeches maybe twice. Um, and I've asked, there's a particular venue that I've been to a couple of times. And once I was like, I said to the groom, I, it's pitch black in here. Like I can't, yeah. like it's going to be quite bad quality. Can I put a, I'm going to put a video light up. I know I said, I don't usually do this stuff, but is that okay? And he was like, no, you can F off me. And I was yeah. like, right. Okay. Fair enough. Fine. You have dark yeah, just gonna, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then when they, again, like we're talking about with, with the group photo thing, when they turn back and, and their, their speeches are, are very underexposed or very dark and they go, Oh, I can't see myself very well. It's like, well, yeah, you, you remember your response to me that's offering to light that, you yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, and that, I mean that's it. It's always like you know it's, you, you can never be forceful and say I'm doing this, but you'd like to think that your couple again have, have given you that money and put their trust in you. Yeah, of course. That yeah. you you wouldn't be asking them saying, look, can I stick this massive unsightly light up onto your <laughs> guest unless it was really really necessary. Yeah, and the only reason I asked was because I knew this particular person wasn't interested in having cameras around him anyway. So I was yeah. like, a light is going to be a, like a. The yeah, kind of like he's like being beamed on during the speech. Yeah, 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 exactly. But next time I was at that venue, I, I said to the bride and groom, "I've got to do that," and they're absolutely yeah. fine with it, and they got better video from it. So, and sometimes as well, like we were talking at the start about about venues not always realizing, yeah, with their schedules and stuff. Yeah. And I often find the same that they're the same with their lights. It's just, oh, it's speeches now. I oh, will turn the house lights to this. Yeah. Where if it's you know if you're in a, in a venue with lots of windows in the summer, they might not even need the house lights on past that but yeah. just to better like, have a conversation with the guy at the bar or the coordinator and go look is there any chance you can just just pop the wall lights on or the house yeah. lights just back on to give me something i will dim I know the it's a little, to make a good fire but yeah, so, yeah great. quite often i have that they're, they're on a they're on like a yeah like a dimmer switch yeah and they pull it down to offer some mood from like the candles that are on the table yeah. and it's like well, and you're like, well they're offering me nothing <laughs> yeah. but even just for the 20 minutes of the speeches can you just yeah just roll it up just to give me some light you put in your notes that candles aren't Candles don't give as much light as you think they, they do. You, Even, look, I don't you look at them with your eye and yeah. you really think, like, oh, they're delivering some light. But Yeah, for... they look like if you're sat around the table, yeah. they offer atmosphere. But in terms of, yeah, actually kind of offering a real output of light, yeah. Yeah. it's it's not, it's not it's not the same at all. No. But then I still kind of have that real problem with, or I still find it really difficult within myself to go to, to use flash any other time than the evening. Yeah. Like I think it would, it would have to be exceptionally dark for me to get to a point where I'm going to go, do you know what? I need to put flash on during the speeches. Do you feel like you can be a, uh, non flash photographer 
and go the whole winter wedding without using a flash? Do you think that's even possible? I still try. I still yeah. almost get myself to the evening. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, again, it's difficult when you're looking at, say, those 4 p.m. dark times that well, even by the time the speeches go up, you're probably still in a dark room. The only the only kind of saving grace you've got in maybe something like speeches is your speakers are still fairly static or the people sat in their yeah. chairs don't move enough that you could probably knock those shutter speeds down, you know, and, and, and open up those apertures that, um, yeah. that I'd be more less comfortable shooting other parts of the yeah. day at. Um, you know, a guy sat in a chair watching a speech, you might get away with 60th of a second, where normally I wouldn't yeah. entertain anything probably below a 200th. Or, 200, or I could yeah. go right down to the limits of my 1.8 lens, where normally I'd be in the 2 point somethings, yeah. just to guarantee that it was in. Everything's I think in, I'd yeah. be really... And again, and that's why we have kit. It, I know it looks fancy to have these kind of really wide apertures, but yeah. at the end of the day, if you need to do what you need to do... At some point, it's going to save the day to, in terms of light. To yeah. let you, you know, open that lens right up to pour in as much available as you can. Yeah. You've got to use your kit to those extremes out of necessity rather than creative choice sometimes just to get an image to deliver. Yeah, we were talking about cameras before we started yeah. recording and how like people, some people use crop sensor cameras and stuff. And it's like, yeah, that's good. But there's a, the reason we use full frame yeah. is not because we're trying to have the fanciest, nicest stuff. It's because what that one day that's going to save you in a really yeah. dark area. That's where it, you need to spend that, few, that extra few hundred pounds on a 1.4. Yeah. That stop uh, down. Yeah. You might not use it 99% of the time, but, but some, if you're shooting in low light and you're in an absolute pinch and grandma's yeah. there sobbing her eyes out during the speech yeah. and if, and you just by opening it up, manages to, to get you that frame yeah. then it's proved it's worth there, That's there, it, there and it? then yeah so plenty of things you can do to prepare beforehand yeah um to make sure your couple's prepared and to make sure you're prepared for any like you know pain points of doing a winter yeah. wedding but in terms of on the day you've obviously you've got obviously got to think about sunset um you've got to think about where you're doing groups yeah. um for you guys and obviously couples as well you've got to you've got to make sure you're doing that at the right time of yeah. year as well i find as well particularly in winter weddings i sometimes in the end depending on what the weather's like when i arrive in the morning yeah you know on a, on a summer wedding i'd probably go for a little wander around the grounds and kind of look out my couple spots yeah. or maybe take some stuff i would probably actively go into the where i know the drinks are going to be and go what options have I got in here Yeah, for, yeah, for yeah, groups? True. Yeah. Like if I know that the weather turns, I'm probably going to be doing my group photos inside. If there's like a chair that I have to move in the morning yeah. or have a word with the wedding coordinator and say, look, how possible is it that we can leave this area free yeah. for me to do my group photos? And that makes, say, some sort of, you know, you're having to move a plant pot or sort something out then. I feel like a lot of this applies more to photography because yeah, you've got for, more for stuff group photos. that you need to do that's more yeah. reliant on that kind of thing. Like for us, the pain points are ceremony and speeches. We don't have much control over it. It happens in a room. That's yeah. it. Job done. But for group shots, I feel like that's probably a big pain point for... Definitely for much so, weddings. especially if you're in a venue which isn't that large. By the time you fill a room with, say, 50 people that are all need to have drinks or whatever, yeah. you could be at a point then where you're trying to shoot group photos with people pressed up against the wall on a stupidly wide lens. Yeah. And so it's almost trying to to kind of allow yourself to kind of, rather than pick somewhere out of being swayed by what a wedding coordinator is telling you or a guest, yeah. go, oh, that looks nice, mate, doesn't or it? Just like, desperation. Almost or go, into a, yeah. go into that venue if you're in an all-in-one place and kind of make those creative decisions or even go and get a chair and stick it there and go, well, how's the light falling on that now? So you can almost do some preliminary tests yeah. of, of where things are so that when you know, you've come through the ceremony and you're making that decision, you can go, oh, well, I thought about this and this is this. And would, you're not trying to try things in front of your couple. Yeah. Would you encourage people to go outside if it was sunny but cold? Or yes. would you just let them have... Yes, okay. I think I always would. I yeah. think just because if if it was bright, it's always going to be brighter outside. Like for me, kind of yeah. quality of light is anything. Yeah. And I think you can... If anything, you'll get your groups done quicker if it's cold. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, just like true. freezing. Yeah. If it's like, cool, look, just we need to just go outside, just, yeah. just get it smashed out, yeah. and we'll get back inside again. Is Sometimes, like there, you always get one joker that wants to kind of laugh or do something. Yeah. Where if everyone else is cold, you might find that you just get out, get it done, yeah. and get and back, back in back again. In, yeah. And sometimes it can be great. Whereas inside, because, everyone's talking, yeah. and like, you can't hear each and, other. Right. So in the summer... Yeah. Everyone stood outside and they're like, oh, let me get that one with their phone or try and do whatever or try yeah. to make a joke and make it last In the winter, longer. they're just hugging themselves. In the winter, out. they're all inside drinking, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know True, like yeah. things. So they're not going to come out and follow you. So it allows you sometimes to be a lot more robust yeah. with getting those group photos done. And if, as long as it wasn't ridiculously windy or chucking it in rain, I would still always push for a cold outside 
that are cramped and darker inside to stay dry or warm. Yeah, talking about summer summer ones. I did a wedding on uh, quite recently where the the group shots were literally done where they have like the reception drinks within that, and the whole all of my candies are just there's a semicircle of about sixty guests just around where the group shots are done, all with their phones out. I've never seen anything like that. Every single person had their phone out sh- shooting the group shots, oh, and all of my like, candies yeah. were just that. <laughs> It's just bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. Like, I must admit, when I started doing this, that used to be much more common. Yeah. There'd always be a nan with like a like a 35 mil that you had to wind on <laughs> and would be there. Or oh, in case on you don't iPad. get it, I'll get one. Or someone with an iPad. Yeah. And now, people almost, they don't even want the group shots. They want to wait yeah. to the group shot to finish. They can grab their selfie with their friend yeah, yeah. or they'll set their own thing up. But they don't seem to want to be over your shoulder getting the group photos. It happens yeah. at a couple of weddings I've had, one, so. but I think it's it happens marginally less than it than it used to. Yeah, and it's almost. I wonder if it's a generational thing now. Is that people are even say guests are switching off to to to, to group shots? Like yeah. I don't want to be true. In them, yeah, yeah, yeah. But aren't looking. To, that's not that's not what they're looking to take for themselves out of a day. But I'd say the reason I asked you about like would you take couples out is because sometimes I've I've really struggled to have that like conversation of like. Oh, should we go outside? Oh, but it's really cold. And it's like, yeah. but genuinely you're going to get, yeah. you know, if if you'll get 60% quality inside, you're going to get 90% outside Definitely right now. So, so yeah. You just, yeah. Even like, even, even if it looks dull outside, just by you being out, you, you, know, you know, I can guarantee that if, you know, again, trying to explain ISOs to a couple, you're wasting your time. But, but it's variety of location yeah. as well. It's not even just quality of light. It's like, your whole wedding film has been inside this room. Please, can we go somewhere? Yeah, most of it's going to be in that room going yeah. forward. So at least what we've got some daylight. Yeah. Or yeah, or sell, sell it that way. That look, it gives you a chance to utilise this part of the venue. Yeah. That you're probably not going to be in for much of the rest of the day. And even like we're saying winter weddings, and you know, I keep talking about the very ends, but even if you're in kind of late October, November, where you know just the other side of the clock's going back. Yeah, you could still find there's some really lovely golden leaves around or, yeah. you know, some kind of really warm, cosy kind of spots. If you do get a little spot of sun, the sun naturally sits lower in the sky in the winter than it does in the summer. So you could sometimes get, you know, that, that real glow that you get post-dinner. Yeah. You can almost get some of that during your drinks reception. And I if people admit. are willing to embrace yeah. it, there's some lovely pockets of light to be found sometimes. Definitely. During those, those candidates. I must admit, doing couple shoot shots during the reception drinks at winter wedding is actually much nicer because you doing a couple shoots or reception drinks in a summer wedding you're always like you and the photographer is like oh it's so bright and it oh it's so much yeah but whereas doing it in the winter you've still got a really low sun even if it's not quite a sunset so you still get like you say like glow coming through the trees yeah. you've got probably more options in terms of watching shadow as well yeah definitely so it's so. actually it's actually quite nice even if you don't get a sunset for yeah like if you like, normally obviously like in a, in kind of a conventional summer wedding shall I say is I would always look to do two couple couple shoots yeah. one say just before the couple sit for food and then one at sunset which is normally later on in the evening yeah. where it's quite often that once you get into a winter wedding the sunset does fall you've got to pick and choose either yeah. just before dinner or even during the meal yeah. and I think that's after I've had that conversation with a couple about their ceremony time um, to make sure that it's early enough to get it in um, I would also that would be my second kind of point to make in terms of kind of you know being honest with them and saying look i've looked at your day your sunset is at five o'clock yeah where i know if your meal starts at four so it's highly probable that the sun is going to go down somewhere between your main course and your dessert yeah so do you want a sunset enough if we get one that you are willing to pop out for 10 minutes during the dinner to get that yeah. and i think it's really important to have that conversation because most of the time particularly for someone like myself who uh, the golden hours are a big part of what i do they do want that. Yeah, and, definitely, definitely. You know, also, by law of averages, they serve a top table first. If you've got eight tables at a wedding, yeah. sometimes the bride and groom have finished their main course oh, before the last yeah. table's even been served. Yeah. So it's like, well, if they can get and their food around. and eat it, yeah. you look at it and go, yeah, it's time to go. They can be out, golden hours done, and back at their table before the, the last table in their room's yeah. even been served, served their main, yeah. let alone Miss Pudding. Yeah. Or if you're doing a couple shoot before the second table. That's it, yeah. That's it. Yeah, before grandma's even taking her teeth out to yeah. eat her main course, we're back, yeah. And I, I, I shot some yeah. weddings in November, I think of 2022. I remember I had, I had two at Southend Barnes really close together. 
Yeah. And we had some, we were, we were blessed with some lovely golden hours again, because it, it, the sun was lower in the sky, that kind of brooding cloud was coming in. You get yeah. a lot more atmosphere in your sunset. You do, yeah. And I think the couple were ready for it. Like if you've, like if you take a couple away from the dance floor in the evening, they're a little bit merry and they almost take those sunsets for granted. Cause it's the middle of summer. Yeah. Where if it's November and you're like, you know, you've not only got a dry day, but you've got an awesome sunset as well. Like, let's yeah. go and do this. They're really like, Oh, you know, we're really lucky to have got to that have yeah. on our wedding day. Cause they weren't yeah. expecting it. Yeah, but it's like we said point. at the top of the episode, like if you book a summer wedding, you are lying if you don't expect sunshine. But if yeah. you book a winter wedding, you're just expecting to have a day. And it may be wet, it may be cold, it may so be whatever. Up, more so to get a to genuinely bright day, yeah. you do feel really lucky. And yeah. most of the time, the couples are much more receptive of wanting to make the most of it. Yeah, Because true. they've been blessed with that sunset rather whereas than some, it be a given. Yeah. Whereas some summer weddings, you'll be like, oh, the sunset's not just after the first dance. You do dance and go away. And then by the time they start dancing, like, I can't be arsed. Like, yeah. Because they've expected it to be sunny. So they're and just it's like, just, yeah, they're just not fussed by it. Because yeah. they are the ones that we got at dinner were sunny as well. Yeah, like, yes. on sunset, okay, but, right. yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, just having that conversation with your couple about like, you know, whether you can interrupt them during dinner and, yeah, and don't, and don't yeah. feel awkward about it. Like yeah. again, like we said about the, the ceremony time is, you know, they, you need to supply them with as much information as you can to give them the best photos. Yeah. And if they turn around and I've had it before when you've gone, look, that sounds amazing out there. And, but it's not as amazing as the sticky coffee pudding that they're eating. <laughs> then yeah. you have to be prepared for them to go, okay, yeah. we won't do it. Yeah. You know, they'll sit, they eat their dessert, they enjoy their meal. And the sun will go down without them. Yeah. And that's their call. You've given them that option. Although it can pain you sometimes to get a winter wedding and get an epic sunset and they don't want to go out in it. But it's not that you've it's, given them the option you, and that's You've given it. them the option and, they, and, 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 and they've made their choice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, also worth asking about Christmas decorations. I don't know if you've ever had this, but I've had couples getting married November, December time who are just like, there's going to be Christmas decks up. I don't want them in the film. I don't yes. want it to be a bit more timeless. So now I always ask like... Are you embracing Christmas or are you ignoring it, basically? Yeah. Good, because again, you, you never know the reason why, why they've picked that December that, that December wedding or that Christmas wedding. It might not be because they they they, they, they want to have a pine tree in the back in yeah. the background and, yeah. and really embrace that. It might just be a circumstance thing, or you know, that's the only time they could get that venue for or whatever. Yeah. So I think it's definitely a worth yeah, rather than you kind of leaning into that Christmas. Yeah, it's such stuff. a small thing, but it's really tempting sometimes. Yeah, like to lean into that yeah. and be like, while you're getting all the establishing shots, be like, oh, there's baubles and Christmas trees and stuff like that, and then you put it in the film. They're like, oh, we do want a Christmas. Yeah, wedding. using that stuff to your advantage actually I'm not, I've forgotten about this but like my last wedding of last year was at a hotel towards the end of November yeah and I remember taking the couple outside and I literally got about six frames into their couple shoot and it started to rain so yeah. we literally ran in and I knew that I didn't really I had like a nice wider walking shot something outside but I needed kind of that like mantelpiece shot of them kind of top half looking towards each other or the camera and needed something. And we came into like the reception, if you like, of the hotel. Yeah. And they had like a sofa with like a table behind it that had like tinsel and like fairy lights on it. Nice. And yeah. then behind that was kind of like a rug and then the fireplace. Yeah. So I literally got the couple to like stand by the fireplace. And I used my 85 and kind of shot through the tinsel and got this kind of oh, really lovely cool. yeah, type yeah. frame of like uh, using the fairy lights as like foreground fall off. And, the, oh, and it was sick. it was a very Christmassy, very winter shot, yeah, yeah. like kind of by a fireplace in like a, in like a but wood in a, in a wood panelled yeah. hotel. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, in the summer it wouldn't have been there. It just would look like a normal boring kind of hotel lobby. Yeah. But I kind of it, it, if using that, and even you looked at it, and it kind of had those proper like kind of yeah like like kind of cozy winter vibes to it. Yeah. So if you've got those things at your arsenal as well, don't be afraid to lean into those decorations if they don't mind it to make something. I think it. that's a really positive spin you've put on it, actually, because I feel like this episode may sound quite negative, right? Because we're talking about, yeah. oh, winter weddings have this and have this and you need to do this. But realistically, what I think it is in the, the reason we refer to it as some, a whole different episode and you've got to be prepared for it and stuff is because when you're starting up in this sort of thing, right, you you might do a couple of weddings for a friend and stuff like that. Like some most of the time, they always end up being in like summer or something and like then you get into weddings thinking that you're just doing these like amazing summer weddings, like, cause most weddings happen in the summer. Yeah. And then you, there's always going to be a, come a point where you hit a winter wedding and you're like, Oh my God, I'm so unprepared for this. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Help. And like, it's obviously really good to have this information before you go into it to know what to prepare for. But like you said, there are some things that can only be done in winter, which is Definitely also, so, yeah. like, I, I do tend to do a lot, lean into like a lot of night couple shoots with, with, with yeah. couple at winter. Cause sometimes you just won't get time during the day to do as many as you want to. 
Um, or there'll be like a long period in the evening where everyone's just hanging around, there's nothing to do. And I'm like, you know what? The couple might appreciate a little backlight shoot. Yeah. Let's go and do that. And some things which are real kind of pinch points or sticklers in summer weddings fall at a perfect time in a winter wedding. Yeah. Like for me to go and do sparklers, sometimes yeah, sparklers. sparklers can be yeah. a real pain point because first dance, sunset, dark enough for sparklers, all fall kind of within an hour of each other. Yeah. Or you're waiting on later to do sparklers and then by then you don't really want to trust like drunk guests with fire and stuff by the yeah. time it's dark enough to do yeah. them. Where I've had winter weddings before where it's been, you know, the best man's finished his speech and then invited everybody out outside for yeah. sparklers and the venue love it because they can clear the dinner room and get ready for dancing then while you're outside yeah. you're in that kind of blue hour which is dark enough for sparklers but yeah. not too dark people are still the right level of drunk that you're not going to set you you or themselves on fire yeah. and it feels that kind of what would normally be like the post dinner lull, a lull with yeah. a really lovely moment yeah that kind of it, it's a much better time to do it then than it would be trying to do them in the summer. No, I agree. I often find I'm doing a lot more sparklers in the in the winter, and sometimes in the summer, like people like will pay us extra to stay longer till it gets dark so they can do sparklers because they want to do them at like ten eleven p.m. Yeah. But it's like I often say to people like just do it a little bit earlier. You yeah. won't have to pay us as much extra if anything at all, depending on what time your first dance is, and like you're not getting value in a in a sparkler yeah. shot. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's I mean, not going to be what you remember, and you know. Yeah, like, I think you need to have it for the moment to feel special. Yeah, and in a summer wedding, it sometimes oh they drag us away from the dance floor yeah. to do this stupid sparkler thing, wherein like people expect or want that more in like a winter wedding. Yeah, and it's a really nice oh because it was too maybe you didn't get confetti earlier or there's no kind of like lawn games. It's a really like it is like the activity the of thing. the wedding. Yeah, yeah, or like the thing to fill the post dinner with rather than just another thing that you've added to your wedding. Yeah. So I do find I think yeah I don't want this to sound like a really negative episode because it's not and when winter weddings do work if you get say a particularly warm or bright day the pockets of light and the kind of coziness the tones you can get from them yeah. are really good but. And I think a point that you made is really good as well is that if you are new to photography, it's it's comforting to know that winter weddings are challenging. Yeah. Like if you get to one and struggle, that's not a reflection on your ability and you're not a failure. Like I've been shooting weddings for well over 10 years now and there's still I've still had moments at winter weddings where I just can't make the light work or just can't seem to wrangle my settings to a point where I'm, I'm getting the the content that I want to get. I just can't seem to get that ISO low yeah. enough that it's sensible. I know that I'm shooting a little bit higher than I want to, or I can't find my way in. And that is just a product of those wedding days. Of course, yeah. Just to do what you can is still, is still enough. You know, it's yeah. not, not supposed to be easy no. because you know, photography and video relies on good light. And when it's not there, there's always going to be a compromise for that. Yeah. And the important thing is, yeah, be prepared and prepare your couples for yeah. for what, you know, you, you can, again, you can only advise them and you can set your expectations in advance. But there is stuff that you can do to make it better with lights yeah. and, and like, you know, asking about sunset and trying to get people outside for groups. If you do all of those things, you're bound to get something that's going to be yeah. like good for the gallery. I think it's probably a similar point that we've said over lots of the these kind of more specialist episodes that we've done is it's giving yourself the best chance to succeed yeah, that yeah. you can. And a lot of that comes down to is, is having the knowledge um, going into it and laying those expectations down. I think yeah. that's, that's, the, that's the main thing is that... And also it will make you look much more experienced towards your couple that you've you've been attentive enough to think of these things to make their day better yeah, rather than you writing them a list of excuses and apologies after when you've sent, yeah. when you've sent them back a, a gallery of dreary, grainy <laughs> photos. Yeah, and I mean, we spoke about it. Um, we've spoken, spoken about it before, but that is what separates someone who takes good photos from a good photographer yeah. is the experience. And if you can demonstrate that experience to your couple, I think that that's a big deal. And that those yeah. are the things that you get the reviews for. We were talking about your reviews before and how they mentioned yeah. how helpful you are and things like that. That's because you've got experience and you can offer advice, not only just before the day. Because after the day, it's like, too late. It's too yeah, late. Exactly. And exactly. I think whilst it might not be what the couple want to hear, I think they really appreciate you being as honest with them and going, you know, you might not be able to get that then because it's not your time of year, but we can do this yeah. that will make that. And I think in order to kind of, you know, we're, we're, we're further into this than, uh, than I thought I'd be. Um, but to end it on a really kind of positive spin and on, or one of the most positive things for me that I find about shooting winter weddings are the dance floors and the evenings are great. Yeah, yeah. Like the amount of times I go to a summer wedding and the courtyard outside is full of people sat there with their glass of wine giggling and Just chatting with the evening guests and relaxing as the sun goes yeah, down. Yeah. But 
with every bit that it can be challenging during the speeches because it's dark, there's no distractions outside. No. So the other side of dinner, apart from to dance and party, people what else is there to do? Yeah. So it means that people are ready to really get onto it. And I think probably most of my favourite dancing photos or the best parties that are photographed have always been either in the very early or the very late stages of the year. Yeah, I think you're right. I think there's that whole summer thing of yeah once the first dance is done oh look it's actually quite nice outside yeah. still that's just and everyone or it's just, just a damn out. hot in the venue that they want to get outside to cool down yeah where for a yeah, a first dance is kind of a real big event in the christmas in like a in like a winter wedding and then yeah and they and people just stay on the dance yeah floor. i agree winter dancing is definitely better winter wedding dancing i just think like for like there's nowhere else to go you've been dr- sat inside drinking all day yeah so people will have the the mood to do it sort of thing so yeah, yeah i genuinely think that's better um, but when we talk about certain expectations, I just wanted to uh, mention the contract that I've started selling. So basically what I've done is I've changed the contract that I got written by a solicitor in back in 2020 um, into a template contract. And I've now been selling this on our, um, on our website. And basically, we got it written by a solicitor just for us. Um, we, we sort of spoke about all the main like, pain points of you know, being a videographer, what yeah. what the client should know beforehand, what problems we've had previously with what people have said after the wedding. Um, and we got this whole contract written. Um, and we just sort of said, you know, can we sell this in the future? Because we think it'd be really helpful yeah. for other people. Because as a videographer and a photographer, I feel like do the same. Is you just, when you start, you just sort of go online and try and find different points yeah. and put them all together. That's how I have my contract. I'll be quite open about it. And it wasn't until we spoke about this on the on the, a couple of episodes ago about yeah. your about your contract that I actually went back and looked through mine and realised how remarkably vague it is in places <laughs> yeah. um, and compared to the level of detail that this one covers yeah. it's it really is it really is quite vague and something which I definitely need to work on in, in, probably in the office it's an extremely detailed contract it's really easy to edit and put your business name and your little variables into it because they're all highlighted and it also comes with a guide explaining each point so for example, only recently someone asked, have you got a point for if I lose all of the footage? Um, you know, And I said, yeah, here's the point for that. It basically limits your indemnity to the whole, the fees paid. Yeah. And they, so they can't sue you for extra, for extra money. compensation basically. or loss. Someone it, commented yeah. back and said, oh, but this means if you lose the first dance and you have to pay everyone their full amount back. And because I've spoken in depth with Slizzard about each point. Yeah. I know that what it means is you're limited to that amount. It doesn't mean you have to pay that amount every time you lose yeah. a one clip or something. It's just that they can't then sue that's the, extra. That's the total loss amount. If yeah, you exactly. have a hard drive failure and you literally lost their entire wedding, they can't be seeking you for any, 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 yeah, any money beyond the yeah. total of the package price. And yeah. those things will help you in your business and make you feel so much more comfortable about the way that you operate. Um, and people who I've sent it to have really enjoyed it so far. And I just feel like it's, yeah, I mean, since we've got it, we have had no problems with, you know, weird questions that couples would ask after yeah. the wedding. Everything is set. The expectation is already set in advance. And so, yeah, so we've been selling that on our website and I'll put the link in the yeah, description. Yeah, definitely link it in. I think yeah. people will find that really helpful. And, you know, like we've said, a lot of this, this episode has been about setting expectations. You don't want to feel that all of your all the conversations that you have with your couple are quite serious and quite businessy and and limiting all the time so to have a contract i think as yeah. as as crystal clear and as thorough as yours if you know once people get that in the booking process they look at it and go oh wow there's lots of stuff in here we've not even thought of yeah and it instills trust in you that you've thought about all these things for them but it also means then that they don't have those oh just this we haven't thought we just thought about this just thought of that yeah is a lot of the conversations that you can have with your couples then remain light and fluffy and exciting rather and than being that oh what if you're sick what happens then or oh, what if we don't like yeah. you know what what does a full ceremony actually include yeah they've got a point of reference so that you can kind of yeah stay kind of upbeat and have and talk about all the fun things in their day rather than you having to kind of spend a lot of your time outlining in terms Going of conditions the to them. And C's, yeah. Yeah. It's like no one you said- wants to talk about that stuff. They want, they want to feel reassured that, that they're covered for it. Yeah. But you don't want to spend ages kind of on a, on a downer going about talking about all the worst things that could happen to their day. <laughs> exactly. You don't want to yeah. go through all that, do you? And often the couple doesn't think of that stuff either. So it's like you said before with Shoot a Ninja, it's let Shoot a Ninja automated emails be the bad cop while you yeah. send the nice fluffy exactly. emails. Yeah. And, and, your, and, your, and your contract is almost the ultimate version of that, isn't yeah. it? Is that, yeah. you know, you're, that outlines some of the absolute worst case scenarios that could yeah. happen to, yeah. to you, them and their footage. So yeah. for you to have that kind of know that everything is outlined and covered in that, 
is, is is perfect peace of mind. Yeah, and people will sometimes worry about oh, if I've because this contract is in depth, right? It's quite long. It's probably the longest contract I've spoken to other videographers and stuff. And like, oh, yeah, maybe a couple of pages or whatever. This is a, a few pages, but we after the consultation call we have a couple and we send them the, the booking area and stuff we say to them please read the contract because it will answer a lot of questions you might not have yeah and it's all like, like you say it's always things like what if we're ill what if we lose the footage what if the weather's bad what it, it, all of these things yeah. are all included in it and so you don't have to go through oh and so if you um if you don't grab me 15 minutes for the speeches i'll miss the speeches like because yeah. it's already in there you don't have to like yeah i think like you said last time when we spoke about this is as much of it's a contract that legally covers you and is written by somebody obviously which is quite qualified in this is it almost acts like a mini faq as well that's what is yeah. that it's it covers all those eventualities so anything that probably anybody could think up or any questions they might have are outlined in the terms of the contract yeah. so as well as covering you and them it also answers a lot of the questions it's a legal faq yeah that's, that's a good way of putting it yeah cool that's it it's good stuff well, it's been a good episode. We've, we've spoken a lot about it. Yeah, how we can make an hour out of winter weddings. <laughs> and basically, yeah, stay, stay yeah. dry, set expectations and don't catch a cold is, don't is, catch, is, is, is the don't crux Don't catch COVID like I had yeah. a winter wedding before. But yeah. I think we've all done it. I think yeah, that was the badge of honour from 2021. 2021, like, yeah. I made it and say it to literally about two weeks before Christmas. Same. And finally succumbed. And I'm almost certain that I caught it at a wedding as well. I got well. COVID over Christmas, caught it at a wedding. Oh, no. And my first one back was... I'd sort of associated a midnight shoot at New Year's Eve or something. Ouch. I just felt so weird after being gone for so long. And that wedding um, that I was talking about where I had the epic sunset, I imagine if anyone's been to the Square Tower in, in Old Ports before know that the stairs that take you up to the roof terrace there are winding and uneven because <laughs> it's like a Tudor building. I remember running up those to kind of get a shot of my couple and I've never felt so near to death in my entire life. Like I got to the top and I was wheezing <laughs> and like the rest of it and from someone that's normally moderately healthy like yeah really didn't where I'd laid up for 10 days coming back after that I'd, I'd felt so rough you have to get back into um, it yeah but again it was a great wedding I think that was a prime example that if you do get a winter wedding where the weather does line up and the people are good that had a brilliant dance floor it had some yeah. awesome kind of mid-afternoon sunsets and there was there was there was loads of positive stuff to come out of that yeah. day yeah. So they're not all bad. It's just and they can game. be really good. It's just the things you need to prepare yeah. for in case they're not. In the same, it's the same as yeah. you know, same as summer weddings. If they're wet or you're, or they're badly managed timelines, yeah, exactly. I just think that they're, they're that much of a different beast to a summer wedding that it was definitely worth, worth doing this, this episode to kind of cover that. Whilst you know, you've probably maybe got some on the horizon. Yeah, sweet, good stuff. That's it. All right, well, well, thanks for listening. That's it, and, and we'll, we'll see, see you. See you in, in a couple of weeks. One. Yeah.